What is the craziest dare you have been given in a game of truth or dare? Number one, a girl dared my good friend to follow her into the bathroom. She left, and he dared me to go to his place. I did. She was disappointed. Then she made out with me to spite him. I felt used, and I liked it. Number two, in my first year of college, I went to an end of high school party that a friend who went to another school was holding. My friend dared another girl at the party to sit on Big Red Gun 14's face and tell him that you love him. My friend was a Monty Python fan. I had never met this girl before, but she seemed very friendly. The girl seemed really nervous, but agreed, so I lay down on the floor. I recall that she asked me to close my eyes. She stood over my face and quickly lowered herself until her thigh briefly touched my cheek and then said, I love you, as fast as she could. She practically ran back to her seat. We were both fully clothed, and it wasn't like I could see up her shorts or anything, so I just figured she was really conservative. I left it off. Later that evening, after the game was finished, someone in the room told that same girl that she had to sit down to her birthday clothes, which she promptly did. She took off everything but her shoes in front of the whole room full of people. That was confusing. There's no booze at this party. We have a membership for those who like more naughty and interesting stories that aren't advertiser-friendly. Check out the link in the description and join our amazing Confessions community so you can support the channel. Number three. I can't quite remember if it was a game of truth or dare or spin the bottle. It was my one and only time playing, though. I remember that much. Also, for a bit of context, I was extremely shy and just barely struggling to break out of my shell a bit. Also, everyone at this party had known me for years. So I was well known as the shy kid. One way or another, I was dared to kiss one of the girls there. I was internally super excited. It would have been my first kiss. But as soon as I came up, a bunch of people seemingly chimed in on my behalf, saying things like, oh, he doesn't want to do that, let him off the hook, etc. I, of course, had nothing to defend myself, and the game went on without me. It was a mildly devastating experience. Dang, foiled by some well-meaning friends. Number four. So, we get there, and it's a normal party situation. Someone got a case of beer, and another stole some liquor from their parents' cabinet, so after an hour or two, everyone was buzzing and getting flirty. We sat down for a game of truth or dare, and the typical kiss her and take your shirt off went around a few times. So after about an hour, there's a bunch of us half-dressed in a circle. This was around the time when it went downhill. My buddy's dad came home early from whatever he was doing, and we heard the garage door open. We all panicked and tried to redress as quickly as possible. In the calamity, I grabbed a girl's shirt, and she started freaking out because she couldn't find it. His dad walked in as I was struggling to put on when I finally figured out it wasn't my shirt and started yelling at us all to get out. I give the girl back her shirt as everyone was rushed out of the house. I'm the last to leave as I want to find my clothes, but I give up after his dad got seriously angry at me. By the time I got to the driveway, I noticed the girls had left without me. So I was stuck a few miles away from home without a ride or a shirt. I said, whatever. There was no remedy for this situation, and I just ran my drunken bum as far as I could. I made it about halfway before I stopped to catch my breath in a neighborhood next to a green belt. I was paused on the sidewalk when I looked up and saw a cop parked a few houses down. Cop flicked on his headlights, and I just stopped. There was no way I was going to make the situation any worse. So they pulled up next to me and asked if everything was okay. I was completely honest with them and told the entire story. I fully expected a ticket, but they just started laughing at me and offered a ride home. When I got home, I saw my mom sitting on the porch, smoking. So I stepped out of a cop car, half bare in the middle of the night, to see my mother shaking her head, looking like hellfire had struck deep in her soul. I got grounded for two weeks. It was totally worth it, though, because I saw my kitties that night. Number seven. I was playing truth or dare with our basement crew of 12 to 18 people outside, by a fire pit with chairs, up a hill, a little off Main Street, behind some trees next to our friend's house. The time for me to choose was fast approaching. Dare, of course. There was a pretty even mix of girls and guys. Dare sat down and sat in the group circle for the rest of the game. No shame in my game. I rushed off into the woods undressed and casually walked back over to the group next to the fire. Jeering and laughter ensued. Onto the next contestant. 
A couple of people later, we saw a flashlight heading up the hill from the house. We can't see who it is because the flashlight was pretty bright. A couple of us yelled, thinking it was just another one of the group. Get out of here with the bright light. No answer. They kept walking up the hill towards us, seemingly blinding each of us directly as they approached us. At this point, we were all basically telling them to get lost pretty loudly because they were blinding us with the light. It was two police officers. We all caught a glimpse of the uniform. The officer with a mag light aimed it at the ground in front of him. He told us to keep it down and stop using profanity. I thought quickly, looked to my right, reached over, and snatched up some leaves to cover my peen. I should have thought again. Immediately, the officer noticed and shined his mag light on me. Insert shockpikachu.jpg. Officer, not even going to ask. Responded to a noise complaint, yada yada. Keep it down, or we'll be back. Exit officers. Enter a lot of laughter. Number eight. One time I was chilling with my friend at her place, and her moon was home. In conversation, she told me I was boring and didn't take risks. She dared me to prove her wrong. She was under a thick blanket, so I got underneath the blanket as well, and then her mom walked in. As the mom was having a whole conversation with me, I was busy with her daughter the entire time under the blanket. As she tried really hard not to make a noise, her mom kept telling me how she wishes her son was like me, what a good boy I was, etc. She made some food and went back to her room. The daughter looked at me in disbelief that I had done that. Yes, we did the dirty that night while her mom was in the other room. Number nine. I was in elementary school and my parents had a couple friends over for dinner. There were six adults just shooting the breeze. One of the couples had an older daughter. There were other children over too, all probably within the same age range as I was. We played truth or dare, and she dared me to run into the living room doing inappropriate stuff while yelling, yes, 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 in front of the adults. I did it and my parents were mortified. Kids nowadays have no chill with these dares. Uh, number 10. Well, it wasn't any of this disgusting I've seen. Um, but I was at a small camp and somebody dared to light a tree on fire. This was the Australian bush. It was the middle of summer and bushfire season. That kind of thing would not go out for ages if a fire was lit. Fortunately, a passing guy who was running the camp caught on, confiscated those matches, and gave a very loud lecture. Man, that was seriously harsh and dumb. If you're into avoiding this kind of nonsense, just smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Number 11. When I was in middle school, I was hanging out with a group of high school girls from the neighborhood. There was a creepy old guy who lived nearby. The I watch you playing while I'm in my underwear, kind of creepy. They said they would all FK down if I managed to get inside his house. I needed that kind of thing in my life. So without hesitation, I smashed my elbow in the concrete and rolled over there under the guise of seeking medical attention. The guy let me in. The house was hoarder's level gross. He watched me clean off my elbow and forced him to let me apply a bandage. The whole time he was grunting or something. I made it out, alive, and unharmed. They made good on the dare. I think the girl saw me as a non-threatening little kid who would chicken out in the face of certain diddling. If you've made it this far in the video, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. Number 12. I beg the truth. The question was, what is the one thing you haven't told me? And I straight up told him, I slept with your older sister with the most serious face. And he said, nice, like it was a joke. And he was laughing his bum off. Then his face went from laughter to, oh my effing God, he did what? Face. Number 13. I was a junior in high school. I was over at a friend's house playing beer pong without beer. We used unsugared Kool-Aid. Yeah, we were that cool. Anyway. When you got a ping pong ball in a cup, there was a number on the bottom corresponding to a truth or dare we had written out previously. My dare was to run around the perimeter of the house with my boxers, so I scooped down around to the door only to find a police officer standing there. I screamed and slammed the door in his face. I opened the door again. Two officers made their way in and began asking questions. They told us they wanted breathalyzers, Y'all jumped at the chance to do so. So I personally had never taken a breathalyzer before. However, once they saw our enthusiastic cooperation, they told us that they didn't have enough mouthpieces and forget about it. They concluded we were not doing anything legal, we weren't, and left. 
We came to find out later that the neighbors across the street called the police because they saw one of us drinking booze, which ended up being an IBC root beer. I also found out that there were five police officers waiting outside at the back of the house in case any of us decided to run. The best game of truth or dare ever. Number 14. I had a sleepover in the first year of middle school. The parents were so happy because they barely had any friends. So they did everything they could to make the party awesome, including leaving us totally alone. The play, Truth or Dare. And there was this one girl who was really good and nice, straight A's, Miss Perfect, pretty much. Someone, I can't remember who, dared her to go bare from the waist down for the rest of the night. She didn't want to, but she started to get made fun of for not doing it, so she did. She looked so miserable walking around my house with her bum and lady parts exposed to the world. Granted, we were all girls, but it was still weird. I'll never forget how sad she looked. I started to say something about it, but I didn't want to go back to having no friends, so I didn't. But I still feel kind of bad about that to this day. Number 15. It was my cousin's wedding, and the best man, as tradition requires, was supposed to remove the garter off the leg of the bridesmaid. Well, the bridesmaid and best man were both shy since all of her families were there, not to mention that both of them were in serious relationships. Well, the duty ended up getting passed on to a family friend, whom, at the time, I had a major crush on. Not to mention she felt the same way about me. My cousins all knew how I felt and dared me to remove the garter, which, under the influence of copious amounts of booze, I did with no hesitation. Everything from here gets fuzzy but I vaguely remember being lucid when I removed her garter with my mouth and putting it back on, the same way I removed it to give the audience, my entire family, an encore performance. Number 16. I was in high school and I played truth or dare at my buddy's girlfriend's house. My ex-girlfriend was there. We recently broke up but still got along fine. Playing truth or dare, she ended up getting dared to give this dude she had a thing for a sloppy and did it. I was angry, to say the least. They went into the bathroom to do this. As the game went on, it got more and more daring. A girl dared to give me a sloppy in the bathroom. Me being funny and fairly intoxicated, she did it right in front of everyone, upping the dare factor. As epic as it sounds, I was excited, scared, buzzed, and freaked out all at the same time and didn't know what to do. She stopped out for a few seconds and everyone was in shock. We won the truth or dare that night. That was the craziest night of my young life, and that's only half the story. In a nutshell, I accomplished the hat trick later that night. Number 17, my friend used to think he was some sort of player, so we were all sitting around playing, and we all knew he was going to dare the hottest girl to kiss him, so we put on our plan into action. My other friend dared him to chug a bottle of ranch dressing, which he did. Then I dared him to chug a liter of Pepsi One, which he did. I then proceeded to throw a part of him very loudly into a trash can in the kitchen. It was his turn and he dared the girl to make out with him. She refused. We laughed. What good are friends if they don't seek a block you at every turn? Pepsi won? Those friends are monsters. Number 18. Okay, so this happened a few months ago, maybe October. I was hanging out with my roommate, and we decided to make a new drinking game. It ended up being that we all had to take as many shots as we could handle, and the person who took the least in this session had to take a dare from the person who took the most, uh, needless to say. We made it up to target a specific guy we really didn't like. He talks a lot of BS and can't back it up to your face. Mocking grin too. And he stole a bunch of our stuff and acted like he didn't when I watched him do it. We had a serious grudge against him. And despite talking a big game, he really couldn't handle his alcohol. My roommate won and he lost as we'd expected. We got him to pass his cell phone around and let everybody in the room send one text message. I texted his mom asking for some pills. Somebody texted his girlfriend saying he was cheating and my roommate sent a picture of his own member, which he wept out, and took a picture of in front of everybody, to the 18-year-old sister. Those friends are straight savages, number 19. We were playing in our college dorm. I picked Dare. A couple of girls playing dared me to go to other strangers and asked me to scold them, especially asking them to stop staring at the girls, those who dared me. A couple of guys felt very embarrassed and told me that they didn't mean to stare, while one guy got angry. He was so infuriated that he started pushing me and telling me that I couldn't tell him what to do. Before the situation got worse, I had to tell them it was a prank, bro.
Number 20. On New Year's Eve, I had four friends over. One of the dares was having to lick chocolate syrup off my foot, and the same guy had to snort hot chocolate powder. My brother ran up and down the street in his boxers. We made my friend eat a surprise sandwich with egg yolk, pear preserves, syrup, and cat food. I got slapped in the bear stomach by everyone, with each one getting harder and harder. And then my cousin had to drink a mixture of mayonnaise, salsa, hot chocolate powder, syrup, and sweet tea. So yeah, things got weird. Number 21, playing truth or dare with my cousins and our mutual friends. One of my cousins was pregnant but hadn't told her boyfriend yet. They were both very young and both playing. It comes to the point in which this dumb, instigating girl asks my cousin, and when my cousin chose dare, she dared her to finish off what was left in the bottle of vodka sitting in the middle of a saw. My cousin obviously said no, that she couldn't. This prompted the girl to say, fine. Truth, are you pregnant? The cousin denied it and said no. The girl, however, was persistent. Why won't you drink then? I just don't feel like it. You can't deny it, dear, because you don't feel like it. I quit drinking. Yeah, and I can fly. Take the drink, Adela. No. Her boyfriend at this point could tell what was going on. My cousin was not the type to turn down a drink, and especially not the type to quit drinking altogether. He stands up, throws the bottle at the instigator's face, grabs Adela, and leads her to a back room. My other cousin Merlina took the instigator to the bathroom to get cleaned up. The bottle hadn't broken. It just hit her in the lip pretty badly. The rest of us remained silent, listening to my cousin Adela and her boyfriend screaming at each other. Eventually, the screaming turned into crying. Finally, they both walked out in tears, and he left without saying a word. She ends up having a miscarriage, too. So, yeah, that game sucked. Number 22. It seemed normal at the time, but we used to play a spin-the-bottle-there type thing down the park when we were younger. I'm talking about year six in the UK. Anyway, thinking about it now, it escalated quickly. Kiss? Sure. Oh, touch your lady bits. Wow, that feels weird. Anyway, I peaked pretty young, and after that, there was this three- or four-year gap where we all went off to different schools, stopped hanging around, and it took until we were older for everyone to be doing that stuff again. Me and my friend were talking about it the other day, both involved in those young sessions I referred to above. Is that normal? We both sort of admitted we may be overly eager as adults, who knows? Though aren't we all? And wondered if it could stem back to that. We also admitted, looking back, that it was probably a bit weird and definitely hasn't been forgotten about. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and click the link in the description to join our community. You can check out this video on your screen in the meantime, and I will see you in the next one.